This is the second week, the second vlog. And I'm so glad that you joined me. If you notice, I got a ring light. I went to Best Buy. A guy named Dante helped me. And I haven't quite figured out how to keep that ring light from reflecting in my glasses. Last week was my very first vlog. I'm a big, loud white woman. And today I wanted to tell you a story about something that happened to me when I was in Holland. Um, I, I love Corey Tim Boom. I do. I'm crazy for her. And Corey Tim Boom, for me, is like one of the greatest Christians that ever lived. So I lived in Holland. After I left China in 1988, I went to live in Holland. And I was teaching at a small Bible college there in the town of Zeist. And in Zeist was a wonderful church that I was a part of, and I really was so blessed by them. And the the congregation was so loving and warm, and they had somebody that would always translate uh, English for me. And one of the people that was one of the translators was, her name was Pope. Can you imagine if she'd been Catholic? That'd be just a bizarre name if your name was Pope and you were born Catholic. But anyway, no, she's not Catholic. So my friend's name was Pope, P-O-P-E, Pope. And she was reserved. She's your classic uh, Dutch lady. She was reserved and very um, calm, and she didn't show a lot of emotion. So uh, we were kind of a funny little friendship, but we did get along quite well. So one day, Pope told me that in Harlem, just a, a few short hours away by train, in Harlem, um, someone was going to be opening the Corey Tim Boom home and make it a museum. And I had been to Corey Tim Boom's home, just walked around it. It was a watch shop in the uh, first floor. And I had gone by there just to kind of connect with the history of Corey Tim Boom. But I was thrilled that they were going to be making it into a museum. And so Pope told me her girlfriend was going to be the new curator and that her friend had offered us a free pre-opening tour. Did we want to go? Well, uh, yeah, it's Corey Tim Boom. Of course I want to go. So I um, got ready and Pope came and got me and we got on the train and we rode our train to Harlem. And we arrived at Corey Tim Boom's house and the curator met us. And she was very kind and friendly and she was a, a warm person. She was also Dutch. So she took us in and she took us around. We got to see all the things. You know, Corey Tim Boom did this and Corey Tim Boom lived here. And this is where they did Bible studies. And here's the clock she describes about uh, that the clock that was a sunburst clock that had been in her family for hundreds of years. And then we went up to Corey Tim Boom's bedroom where they had, um, that where they showed us where the Jews were hidden when the Nazis came to inspect the Ten Boom house. Now, if you recall and you've read the book, The Hiding Place, or you've seen the film, you know that Corey Ten Boom's family built a small false closet, and behind that closet was a four-by-six room, and they hid the Jews there whenever there was a surprise inspection. So during this particular time, there was a surprise inspection. The Ten Booms hid uh, their, the Jews that were staying with them. They hid them in that four-by-six room. But unfortunately, all of the Ten Boom family was arrested. So Corey was 54, I think, and Betsy was probably 60. And Papa Ten Boom, their dad, was 90. Neither Corey nor Betsy had ever been married. So they were... Um, women who lived at home with their dad and helped care for him and minister. And also, Corey Tim Boom was the first female uh, watchmaker licensed in Holland. So that was a, a great uh, job for her. That was her profession, to be a watchmaker. So the Nazis came and the sympathizers, the Dutch sympathizers for the um, Germans, came and they took the Tim Booms to prison. Papa Ten Boom unfortunately died in that prison and was buried in an unmarked grave. And Betsy and uh, Corey ended up in Ravensbrück in Germany, a concentration camp. I highly recommend you read The Hiding Place or watch the film. It's available on Amazon. So there we were, and you you got to know, okay, I'm, I, I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I cry. I cried everything. Uh, I, when, when the Lord moves on my heart, I just start bawling. So here are these two reserved Dutch women, the curator and Pope, not the Pope, but, you know, my friend Pope. And we were walking through Corey Tim Boom's house, and they were pointing things out and asking questions. And all I was doing was crying, like sobbing. I mean, I, it'd be okay just to have a tear or two, but now I was like going. <laughs> I mean, it was that, you know, 
nasty. It was nasty crying. So we went through, and the lady was really nice, and then we got ready to leave, and um, we'd been there about an hour and a half, and the woman offered to uh, pray for me, which was probably for my mental health, I'm sure. So she prayed for me, and it was a sweet time, and we walked out of Corey Tim Boom's house, and we were walking up the street to go back to the train station, and I noticed on the side of the wall was this black, uh, brass plaque, this beautiful brand new brass plaque, and it was shiny. And in about six languages, they had a phrase. And so I found the English phrase, and it was Papa Tim Boom's favorite phrase, um, the best is yet to come, which made me start crying again, you know, because I'm like that. So I'm looking at that plaque, stroking it, and, and weeping, because the best is yet to come. And all of a sudden, I hear this Dutch man's voice speaking in Dutch, looking over my shoulder, and he's saying something, and I don't like the tone of it, quite honestly. And he's probably about 80 years old. And he was in this um, large overcoat, you know, the kind that's double-breasted with a belt. And he had on one of those woolen riding caps, which, by the way, my husband wears all the time. So he has on that cap, and he's looking grumpy, and he's saying something. And I, I look at Pope, and I go, what, what is he saying? Because it doesn't sound pleasant. And she goes, I don't think you want to know. I go, yeah, tell me. what. No, I want to know. What is he saying? She goes, eh, probably better not to translate. And I go, Pope, tell me what he's saying. And she says, he says that that's nonsense. <laughs> and I said, what? And she goes, he's pointing to the plaque. He said he knew the Ten Boom family. And he's saying that's such nonsense. Well, excuse me, but you do not criticize my Corey Tin Boom, okay? You don't diss on Corey, not around me, because you are going to get wrath. So I turned around, and I looked at him, and I said, what did you say? And he told me, that's nonsense. They gave their lives for nothing. Pope's translating. And I go, Pope, I need you to translate this. She's like, okay. I said, oh man, you think this is nonsense? If you were to die tonight, if you were to die tonight, do you know where you'd go? Do you know where what happens to you when you die? To your memories, to your spirit, to your physical body, to your soul? Do you know where you'd go if you died tonight? And Bless his heart, the old man sucked in air. And his whole countenance changed. And Pope is translating. And he says to me, No, I don't. And it's my biggest fear. I am so afraid of dying. I live alone, and I'm old. And I could die any night, any time. And I have to tell you, I am gripped with fear. I do not know what would happen if I die. Well, then I felt kind of bad because I'd been so mean to him. And I said, well, you can know. Do you want to know? And then he stopped speaking Dutch and started speaking English to me. You know, people in Holland speak English. So he started speaking English. And he said, I would like to know, but I don't think God can forgive me. If you're going to tell me that he's going to forgive me, I don't think God can forgive me. So I told him, no, God can forgive all of us. Jesus came to die on the cross and shed his blood for our sins. But that didn't end there. Jesus rose from the dead, and he sits at the right hand of Father God. So all you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to wash you and cleanse you, that you repent and say, I've done wrong, but Jesus, I want you to come into my heart and live in my heart. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Savior of the world. Does that make sense? And he said, yeah, it does, but I don't know how to pray. And I said, I'll pray with you. So Pope and the old man and I held hands. He took his cap off and put it in his hand, and the three of us stood outside Corey Tim Boom's house, 
and we prayed. And that old man asked Jesus to come into his heart. I could feel the hot tears from his eyes fall and splash onto my hands. When we'd finished praying, we looked up and I looked at him and you know, his countenance was different. He looked different. And I said, do you feel different? And he said, I feel different. And I said, tell me, tell me what you're experiencing right this minute. And he goes, one, I have peace and I haven't had peace in years. And he said, and I also believe that Jesus has come to live in my life. And I go, oh man, if you die tonight, do you know where you're going? And he said, heaven, I'm going to heaven. And I said, that's right, you're going to heaven. And we just rejoiced right outside Corey Tim Boom's house, right underneath that brass plaque. So finally, uh, Pope had given him a card and some information, and he put his hat back on and, and kind of skipped off down the road, you know, step down the street. And I turned and looked at Pope, and I was so excited. And she goes, do you know what just happened? And I said, yeah. We just led an old man to Christ outside of Corey Ten Boom's house. And I said, can you imagine? I mean, Corey, when she was a child, she used to lean out the window and pray for passers-by. And I wonder if Corey Ten Boom had ever prayed for this man. And in my mind, I thought, I'm getting to be a part of Corey Ten Boom's ministry. Oh, I was so excited. Pope says, do you know what happened? Poor Pope. I go, yeah, Pope. We led that man to Christ outside of Corey Tim Boom's house. We just led a man to the salvation knowledge of Jesus. Is that so wonderful? Pope goes, no. He was speaking Dutch and you were speaking English. It was exciting for me. I think Pope was a little bit afraid. <laughs> But I think in the timing, God was like, you know, Pope, I appreciate you translating, but we're short on time here. So the old man was speaking Dutch, but I understood English. And I was speaking English, and he understood Dutch. God is so good. He's so faithful. He equips us with everything we need at the time that we need it. All the way home on the train, I looked over at my little Dutch friend, Pope, kind of dazed, a little bit in shock. And all she could say on the three-hour train ride home, you were speaking English and he was speaking Dutch. I hope this encourages your heart today. I hope that you are inspired to believe God to do big and miraculous things because he's able and he does, he does far and exceedingly above and beyond anything that we could think or imagine. He's like that. Well, thank you so much for subscribing to Truth Matters with Terry McCarthy. Uh, the name of this particular vlog is Such Nonsense. It's also available on my blog at Terry McCarthy, blah, blah, blog, hashtag Truth, truth Matters. And I'm also doing a podcast daily. So I will put just below there, I'll put all these links and links to those books and some information if you're interested in it. I'll also include my email address. I would love to hear back from you and hear what God is doing in your lives. So that's Truth Matters with Terry McCarthy. And I'll see you next Friday. In the meantime, believe God, trust God, have a great weekend and rejoice.